Welcome back. There are concerns growing in the GOP this morning. This after the acting White House Chief of Staff, Mick Mulvaney, stood before a group of reporters and seemed to admit that there was a quid pro quo over military aid to Ukraine. At least two Republican lawmakers have already expressed their worries publicly. Alaska GOP Senator Lisa Murkowski called the comments absolutely concerning. Florida Republican Congressman Francis Rooney is going to be on this broadcast shortly. Described Mulvaney's comments as troubling and, quote, not a good thing. I'm pleased to be joined now by Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger from Illinois. He serves on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. is also a veteran. Congressman, always good to have you on good the broadcast. Good to be with you on such a slow news day. Yeah, exactly. Nothing's happening this right. week. Uh, last month, you tweeted, when the whistleblower complaint first came out, that, that, that there were two big unanswered questions yeah. that you needed to get more information on. One was, why was the aid to Ukraine suspended? And two, what role did Mr. Giuliani play in, in foreign policy? It, it appears that now we have those questions answered. I mean, the, the, you have a whole host of uh, administration officials saying that they were told to route Ukraine policy through Giuliani. And it seems, based on Mulvaney's comments, that there was a tie between the Ukraine aid and, and investigations going back to 2016. Has that changed your view on impeachment? No, it's look, it's quite concerning. And mm -hmm. I think we're going to get more information as we're seeing this happening rapidly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one thing, though, to jump and say, this is where we are at. It's mm -hmm. impeachable. We have to get more details of it. You know, with Mulvaney, I have no idea why he said what he said. Mm -hmm. He's walked it back since. Was he talking about just general corruption, or was he talking specifically about the Biden issue? Mm -hmm. um, the Biden issue would be what's very concerning, because it would be using, if it's true, mm -hmm. using taxpayer-funded aid and policy yeah. uh, for a political reason, which is totally wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's general corruption, uh, we are right when you hear people say that. We do that all the time for corruption, mm -hmm. but it depends what the purpose is on it. So a lot of concern in all mm -hmm. of this, and uh, I think we're going to hear a lot more probably very soon. You know the importance of this military assistance. Yes. I mean, I, I, keep, I remind folks on the air as often as I can, Ukraine is fighting a war with Russia. More than 13,000 people have been killed. Yeah. And, and during the time of that, I've spoken to Ukrainian officials, during the time that this aid was suspended, there was shelling. People died during mm -hmm. this time. Does that, you know, does that even that possibility that this aid was somehow compromised, how significant should that be to Americans at home? I think it's significant and it's concerning. Mm -hmm. And we'll get more information on the mm -hmm. details of it, I have no doubt. I have been begging for aid to Ukraine since this whole thing kicked off. Mm -hmm. uh, the prior administration gave them thermal blankets, not lethal weapons. Mm -hmm. They now have lethal weapons. So we have to recognize that that's a good thing. Right. Now, Javelin within the intermediary, and I remember sitting in a Foreign Affairs Committee and hearing that we were suspending this aid, at least temporarily, and I was flabbergasted. You know, what's the reason behind it? I think that was about that July time frame. Yeah. And uh, no doubt we're going to find out more. Okay, I want to talk about Syria. Yeah. As you're aware, the president was touting a ceasefire yesterday. The Turks called it a pause in the fighting, but there are reports this morning from our Kurdish allies, or former, I suppose I'd call huh. them on the ground, uh, that, that there are already violations of that ceasefire. Is that a ceasefire in name only? Uh, it depends. I mean, I, anytime you have a ceasefire, there's going to be skirmishes still, mm -hmm. people that don't get the word or don't care. I think it'll, the next 24 hours will show how that develops. Anytime you can stop fighting, it's good. Now, the question is, what does this look like? I think Erdogan is meeting with Vladimir Putin shortly, like in four days. So in the midst of a ceasefire, what do they negotiate? We, we ceded effectively Syria over to Russia and yeah. Turkey. They are the major players there now, and Iran. So when they get together, are they going to basically carve out Syria for themselves? That's a question, and that's a concern I have. Mm -hmm. So ceasefire in and of itself, good. But a ceasefire that says now the basically the Kurds have to evacuate, they have to get out, de facto gives Turkey what they wanted through military objectives, and we still have abandoned our allies. We had to bomb our own military base, for yeah. God's sakes. Uh, it reminds me of Somalia and South Vietnam. Mm. And it's, it's, it's disheartening. And I think, I think the impact isn't even being felt yet. We see an immediate you know, action consequence response to American isolationism. But I think over the next decade especially, but even the next few years, the impact to when we need allies now yeah. in the future is going to be felt. And, it's, and you know, leaving's one thing, but leaving in the way we did, mm -hmm. in a hurry, to where we have to bomb our own base. For, you know, it was the right move because we couldn't compromise it, but un unbelievable. As a result of this, is today's America seen as strong or weak in the Middle East? You know, I think weaker in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say weak. We're mm -hmm. still America. We are the biggest mm -hmm. power in the world. But our policy in the Middle East, and we have to be fair here, I do think the weakness started with the failure to enforce the red line in mm -hmm. Syria. And it followed with the, administra the Obama administration allowing Russia into Syria, Russia's expansion. And then this administration initially started out good, enforcing the red line when chemical weapons were used. 
And then last December when the president said we're out, he paused, and then of course this has put us in a far weaker position. Yeah, uh, I have to ask you before we go about the, the president's very public decision now announced by his chief of staff at the White House podium uh, that the G7, a major international summit, uh, a, a, a massive, you could call it a taxpayer funded contract, uh, that the president's awarding it to his own property. Is that acceptable for a sitting president? No, I, I'm not. I'm not happy with it. Now, when you look, I actually read the emoluments clause again yesterday, mm -hmm. and it talks about you know titles and nobility and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. I don't know if it's a direct violation, but it's. I don't understand why at this moment they had to do that. I mean, do it in D.C., do it in Miami at a different resort, whatever it is. It's like an unnecessary throwing what, some. What about out there. the principle? I mean, it, it's like if if you had a congressional event in your district, right? And I don't know. Let's say you owned a bar there, right? And sent the contract to that bar where you'd profit off. It. I mean, you wouldn't do that. I, mean, I don't know. I, there may be rules against it for yeah. me, even. Um, but you know, the administration has different rules on some of those things, and even Congress does. We make our own rules. I wouldn't do it. I, I mean, I don't know. You know, the the controversy about, for instance, the air crews staying in Scotland. I actually defend the president on that because I know DOD travel regulations, and there are decisions that are made not by a president, but by air crews that want to stay at nice places within the DOD guidelines. Right. This is something that feels a little different. It's a decision made by the president himself. Uh, Congressman Kinziger, always good to have you on the broadcast. Good to be here. Thanks.